progress means moving on. At some point, the familiar ends, and the next step is wholly new. It's a risk. But risks are how we grow, and if we're not going to grow, then what's the point? Where's the satisfaction of getting it done, or good enough? Enough is the bar for acceptable, not excellence. No, excellence is always one step further. You deserve tools that aim higher. Your needs, like your path, are not fixed. Evolution Wireless Digital does more than get the job done. It helps your work evolve. I could walk you through what's new. The power of a digital UHF system, the scalability, the streamlined simplicity of the design, or how all of the key functions can be performed at a distance. But there's another place in time and plenty of links for details. The truth is simple. We set our sights higher and built what you needed. The result? A system that responds to your needs, allowing you to redefine how you perform. Whether you're the tech, the talent, or a bit of both, this is the way forward. Evolution Wireless Digital, evolving with you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the TMP Pro Educational Series. Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Greg Simon, the trainer for Sennheiser USA. Greg, welcome aboard. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, thanks for uh, spending some time with us and uh, talking about this really, uh, really revolutionary product you guys have just brought out the EWD. Um, great job with it. Uh, well needed, a uh, very welcomed addition to your very strong catalog. Uh, the question I get from the field, quite frankly, Craig, is what, what, what makes it different? How would you, uh, how would you answer that? Yeah, I mean, really, it is something new, right? It's, it, it is an RF system, and it works in the UHF band, right? So this is something very familiar and very controllable, but it's also something that's never really been done before. And it's really just a few things that we've kind of been able to do with this system that alleviate a lot of the the issues that we had with wireless microphones before, right? Like once sure. you use Evolution Wireless Digital, you really have this feeling of, why did I have to do all of this other stuff before I just wanted to use the microphone, right? I just want my show to work. I don't want to have to figure all of this out. And so there's a few things about the system that really put it into that category where no other mic's really been yet. Well, we always have known Sennheiser for the audio quality, but now the ease of use is on par with, you know, this, you know, the quality of your audio. Can you go into that? Why is it easy? What 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 have you guys done? What kind of a special sauce have you given us to make this simple? Because we know RF is not easy by any well, means. Absolutely, right? And what, what I've kind of like, what we've realized is that the things that made wireless microphones complicated were actually the fact that they had some pretty severe limitations. Sure. And in order to get around those severe limitations, we had to put like complex workarounds in. Sure. Right. And yeah. once we were once we were able to advance the technology enough mm -hmm. where we didn't need the complex workarounds anymore, they inherently just became far more simple to use, right? Sure. If you don't have to coordinate frequencies, you don't have to worry about sensitivity settings, then you don't have to know how to use them. Okay, I got to stop you there. Did you say you don't have to worry about frequency coordination and sensitivity? You are, you've got my attention. What, what, what do you got there? What are you doing? So there's two things, the two really big points about wireless in general that made it so you have we had to put workarounds in in the past, right? So the first thing sure. is the amount of dynamic range that a system had, right? So no system up until Evolution Wireless Digital had enough dynamic range that you could just put it in front of anything, not worry about what the volume of that thing was, and capture it without either having a crazy low signal or overloading your input or something. So you had to adjust for that, right? You had to have a setting in there and you had to say, okay, this person's going to be really loud, so I got to bring mm -hmm. it down. And now, okay, this next person's not so loud, so I got to bring it back up. And, and you keep adjusting the sensitivity level. And unfortunately, when you reduce the sensitivity, you're also really reducing the quality of the sure. capsule coming in. Absolutely. So ideally, you'd want to have enough dynamic range on the other side where you never have to do that anymore. And this is the first system we were finally able to get enough dynamic range and so we could do that. And we're actually 
they have 134 dB of dynamic range in the system. So that's enough to put it in front of a jet engine at 50 meters. So mm. in any real world application, you should, you'll be fine doing that. And now yeah. you don't have to have skill in order to set that sensitivity setting properly anymore because there isn't one. You don't need it. That's incredible. So that's like saying that church volunteer could go from a female singer to a male singer and not have to worry about that and just do their normal gain setting to just accommodate and be done. That's really, uh, it's a welcomed feature, my friend, truly. Wow. That's great. I mean, you can really go from anything. You can go from a drum to a singer, to a instrument, to a, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's enough. Mm. There's enough bandwidth there, enough range where you can just put it in front of whatever you want. Incredible. So wow. um, I can give you a little bit of insight into how we did sure. that, right? Because the Please. first thing a lot of people ask is like, well, how did you get so much more dynamic range than anybody else, right? Because yep. you have to remember about 120 dB is the most you're going to find on any other system. Yeah. And 134 is not a little bit more, right? It seems like it's not <laughs> that much higher, but we're talking about a logarithmic scale now. So it's actually a 5x difference yeah. from 120 to 134. So 120, which is again, the most you're going to find is about 20% of the dynamic range of 134. So it's, it's a lot more. And, and in order to do that, right, we really borrowed a, an idea concept from another industry, right? And mm -hmm. we're not the first ones ever to do this. We are in a wireless microphone. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, this is a concept that's been around for a while of, if the dynamic range is too great, and it doesn't matter whether we're talking about audio or whether we're talking about video or mm -hmm. photos, right? Sure. You can use multiple capture devices and marry them together in order to create this kind of one master thing. So an HDR photo has been doing this same concept of using multiple in in that case, it's you know it's a it's a sensor, light sensor, sure. um, to capture the low level light and the high level light, the bright light, and marry them together to kind of make one perfect image. And that's really what we're doing in Evolution Wireless Digital is we have two converters that are working in tandem together in order to create to capture this massive amount of dynamic range. Incredible. Always borrowing from other uh, industries. It's really interesting to see. This is just. Uh... It's incredible. I didn't. I would have never even thought of doing something like that. It's incredible. Well done. Yeah. Well, well done. Well, wasn't my idea, but I no, appreciate. You know, but no, Sennheiser. Well done. Well done. It's just a, for sure. So you guys are offering these. I would imagine in a belt pack and a handheld and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely right. So they're going to come in all your standard flavors, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do belt pack and a handheld. Um, sure. The cool thing is because of the flexibility that we now have with the system, sure. we really only have one handheld and one body pack. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll use any of our elements, any of our capsules. They have switches on them that can be deactivated or enabled. So sure. there's a lot of flexibility there without having a million different parts and components. Um, sure. And it is the first system anywhere near this price point that we're able to actually use all of our capsules. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to have a high-end Neumann capsule or like, you know, super high rejection dynamic capsule, you can use that on Evolution Wireless Digital. And with the amount of dynamic range and the quality of the converters that we have here, you are going to get the best possible sound quality, even though it's not necessarily the most expensive price point. That's awesome. Now, question for me, being the older guy on the call, how are you guys like setting up the unit? How are you guys going in and doing all that? Are you guys doing that through a computer or are you guys figure out a different way to do that? Well, so there's a couple ways to uh, control the unit, right? So mm -hmm. we do have the front panel. Now, because mm -hmm. a lot of the settings are no longer needed, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more simple on the front panel. There's no windows, sure. there's no menus. It's all right there. There's just a couple different things that you can change. Sure. Um, you know, you still have some gain settings that you can control, not in the transmitter. Mm -hmm. We don't need it there anymore, but you still want to have control over that audio level. Um, sure. So you're not hitting your console with crazy different levels. Mm -hmm. um, so you have all that there and you can control it all from the front panel. But also we now have the ability to use an app to control this. And oh. It's also a little different than anything else that's on the market, right? Because using an app to control something is not a new concept, right? This is something sure. that everybody is doing. Mm -hmm. But because we have switched the syncing of the device from IR, which is 
basically what's been on every wireless mic for 40 years now, mm -hmm. um, to Bluetooth low energy, we can now not only get like tremendously more sync range, but we can actually use that Bluetooth to create a network to control with a smart device through an app. So that means that you don't have to buy anything else in order to use the app, right? So you can wow. buy an Evolution Wireless Digital or 10 Evolution Wireless Digitals, have your smart device that you already have, download the free app and have that full network control all over the app in real time wow. without buying anything else. And is that doing all the coordination and everything too through that app, Greg? So I'm glad you brought up coordination because that's actually the other thing about this system that is really kind of different, right? So it is coordinating all the frequencies, right? There's always some sort of coordination. But when we talk about frequency coordination, what we usually are referring to is a complex set of frequencies that all work together, right? And so right. just to back up for a second. Sure. Every other system on the market, or basically every system on the market, with the exception of this one and our digital 6000 system, mm -hmm. is susceptible to something called intermodulation, right? And that's essentially sure. the transmitters get close to each other, the energy from one overloads the other, and it creates new frequencies in the air, right? And this is yep. now creating lots of, you know, other interference frequencies and a lot of, you know, um, pollution in, sure. in the RF environment, right? Sure. And now what we have to do is we need to make sure that, okay, I've got my two wireless mics. They could generate a certain amount of pollution. And mm -hmm. now for my third wireless mic, I have to avoid that pollution. Mm -hmm. And then the third wireless mic generates even more pollution with the first two. And now I have to avoid all of that. And then sure. so on and so on. It actually gets to the point where if you have 32 wireless microphones near each other, they, in theory, can generate up to 16,000 other frequencies in each order. So if you really want to be safe about it, if you have 32 wireless mics, mm -hmm. you have to avoid 32,000 other frequencies, um, which is almost impossible, especially with this shrinking spectrum and all of this. Sure. My, my, and we're not so, even talking, we're talking in-ears, we're talking clear intercom, we're talking all of it. We're talking all these things are adding to that uh, landscape. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <sighs> So yeah. the thing about Evolution Wireless Digital, that really makes it amazing. I mean, this is not a brand new concept, but at this price point, this never been done before. Sure. Is the fact that you can bring them near each other and they are resistant enough where they don't create that interference pollution, those other frequencies. Sure. So now you can stack them right next to each other. So before you had to stagger it, make sure you were avoiding yeah. all of that pollution that was coming into the RF environment. Mm -hmm. And now you, you don't have to worry about it. So if you're using all Evolution Wireless Digital, you can literally just put them in any open spot. As long as they're 600 kilohertz apart from each other, you can stack them right next to each other. And, and that's it, right? So Man. it's very easy. If you're using it with other systems, you still do have to worry about what interference mm -hmm. and pollution that other system can make because you can't put this system on top of another frequency or interference frequency you can't put any sure. system on top of other stuff like that of course um, but you can you know it, it creates a lot more uh open environment and a mm -hmm. lot more you know things so if you look at a lot of systems it'll say oh in six megahertz i can get 10 channels, right? And Evolution mm -hmm. Wireless Digital in six megahertz can get 10 channels. But what you're not seeing when you see that specification is, okay, well, if I put 10 channels in the six megahertz, mm -hmm. how many channels can I put in the six above and the six below? The mm -hmm. answer is usually zero uh, mm -hmm. with other systems. With this system, it's 10 above and 10 below. So you can continue to stack these systems. It also means that we can get a crazy amount of channels in theory, if there was open space. So per band that we have, it's like 92 plus channels that you can get, um, assuming that the whole thing's wide open. It also means that when it's not wide open, because it never is, if you have one or two or three open TV stations, you can get 20, 30 channels in there, no problem. That's going to make the touring personnel who are now busy again, their life a lot easier walking in and being able to do, you know, a quick, you know, plot and go. Was, oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yes, it sir. just, it, it makes it really easy. So if you are coordinating with other systems, you can 
you know, kind of know that these will almost operate self-contained. And as long as you're mm -hmm. avoiding those, they're not going to interact with other systems. Yep. Um, and if you're using all evolution wireless digital, you can just basically do whatever you want. Just put them somewhere that's an open space and they work. That's amazing. And again, that's all through the app, right? It's doing all that coordination for you. So you can do it through the app, but you don't yep. actually need the app at all. You can do it oh. just from the front panel. Um, mm -hmm. So what the systems actually are going to do is they'll do a scan, right? Just like every other system will do a scan, yep. except once they find an open spot, they stop and they say, you can use this spot. No problem. Everything's fine here. So it also makes that scan really, really fast, right? Because all the systems have to scan the whole band that they can do. Mm -hmm. And then they have to figure out where it can put frequencies within the open space. This mm -hmm. system doesn't have to do that. This system just finds an open space and stops. So you'll notice the scan here can take less than a second versus 30 or more seconds in other systems. So would say, you know, multiple systems, when you do that, do they individually say they're ready to go once they do the scan and you just hit this, you know, power button or whatever to, you know, lock that frequency in kind of thing? Yeah, so there's two ways of doing it, right? You sure. can either do it from the front panel yep. and then you do them one at a time and then mm -hmm. they see each other, right? So the first system says, okay, I have an open spot. Second system says, oh, I see the first system, so I'm going to avoid that one. Mm -hmm. And here's another open spot, so I'll go here, and so on and so forth. And you can just keep doing that until you run out of available spectrum. Uh, the other thing you can do is in the app, there's actually an automated process mm -hmm. um, to do up to 16 channels simultaneously. So you can connect all the channels to the app. Yep. And then you can do up to 16 of them by hitting an auto scan inside the app. And what it essentially does is it scans all 16 of them at the same time. They coordinate with each other and then it disseminates those frequencies down. So it makes it much, much faster. Um, mm -hmm. We do have a, a quick little video that we have um, put together uh, where we actually show a scan being done from the, uh, from the app. And mm -hmm. then we actually sync all four of those transmitters. So it's a four channel system that we're, that we're building in mm -hmm. this little video. We do sure. the whole thing in under a minute. So that's from, okay, our systems are powered on to coordinated frequencies and we're, and we're doing the show in yeah. less than a minute. That's incredible. What would if, um, if anything, how hard is it in real time to change a frequency when you're in, say, in the throes of battle and you needed to change the frequency really quick? Yeah, so I mean, the the big advantage to having find a new frequency and go versus scan the whole thing and find mm -hmm. a whole bank that you can use um, mm -hmm. is the fact that it's so much faster there, right? So let's do let's talk really quick about mm -hmm. what would be the scenario if you're using another system, right? Okay, sure. We're having interference on this frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we do a scan, right? Now, if we're lucky we find another channel inside the same bank we're already using mm -hmm. that we can use. So that takes, you know, 30 seconds for it to make sure that scan happens and do all this stuff. So then we say, all right, we're going to go to the new channel that's in that bank because we got lucky, right? Yep. And we're going to use that frequency. So now we have to go get the transmitter from the stage. We have to bring it to the front of house. We have to hold it in front of the, we have to hit sync button, hold it mm -hmm. in front of the receiver for three to four seconds, right? Okay, it syncs. Now we're both on new frequencies. Everything's good. You bring it back up to the stage, you put it back on the performer. You know, you spend six minutes trying to get it back in their wig or something, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. But that, sure. that's, how, that's how it works. Yeah. With Evolution Wireless Digital, because there's no coordination, and actually before I talk about Evolution Wireless Digital, if you don't get lucky, that says mm -hmm. there are no more frequencies in this bank. <laughs> so you now have to change all of your wireless microphones to different frequencies in order to guarantee that they won't interfere with each other. So mm -hmm. that's your, uh-oh, there's no more frequencies. And now I have to do that. If we're lucky, we can find another frequency in the same bank. Sure. With Evolution Wireless Digital, the process is, okay, we're having interference on this. Somebody walked in with a device that's interfering with it for some reason. We didn't see it before. Mm -hmm. You hit the scan button on that one receiver. It finds a new frequency and it stops. This usually happens in under a second, unless it's really far away that it has to find a new frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Usually happens in under a second. You hit the sync button. As long as the stage is less than 125 feet away, you tell the performer, press the sync button in the wig. They press the sync button, it is done. So theoretically, you could do this in two or three seconds versus the minutes that it takes to go get the other transmitter, do this, whatever. There's also no scenario where, oh, 
this coordinated bank of frequencies isn't going to work. So you have to rescan all your devices. That's not mm. possible because we're not actually coordinating them in a complex way anymore because we don't have to. So it really brings that scenario down to, you know, we can fix it in a few seconds versus could be minutes to do it. Well, that's going to save a lot of, a uh, lot of, a lot of shows and a lot of, uh, jobs <laughs> when the wireless unfortunately might go down, you know, especially in those critical moments, it's, you know, you know, three seconds can be an eternity sometimes, especially with some of these shows, you know, you know, the ticket prices they are and stuff like that. So that's an unbelievable addition. It's, it's really cool. Really it makes really a huge cool. difference. And the thing you have to remember is like, you can't control the environment, right? Like oh. if something happens that you don't have control over, if you know, you're doing a show and everything is great and the building next door starts doing something different. Gets lit up. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like you, you might, you might've done everything you could possibly do to do scans and make sure you were on clean frequencies and make sure, you know, everything was accounted for. And then all of a sudden in the middle of a show, you know, down the street, something happens and you have no control over it, right? So being able to adjust quickly is, you know, priceless. Yeah, well, especially in the heat of battle. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, that's just, uh, and the fact that you can do that from 125 feet away and be able to do that is pretty, uh, pretty cool, you know, especially, yeah. you, you know, with uh, like, uh, like most house of worships have their uh, wireless out at their mixing position. So being able to do that and just having a, a, a volunteer on stage or whatever would be an incredible, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an invaluable tool, quite frankly. Ah, and so you have the app one app other app. thing that's really cool about mm -hmm. the app, right, mm -hmm. in terms of doing this that we're talking about, is you can sync from the receiver to the transmitter up to 125 feet because they're actually both Bluetooth 5.1, um, which is pretty new to actually... Mm -hmm not even in the newest iPhone yet kind of deal. Um, so that's how we're getting that really big range. But oh, cool. let's say okay. you say, well, wait a minute, but that's great for that, that theater over there, but I'm 250 feet away now. What do I do? Mm. Right? Well, it's actually really easy. So you can actually initiate the sync from the receiver and get 125 feet of range, or you can initiate the sync from your phone. Now, your phone will probably not get 125 feet of range because it's probably not Bluetooth 5.1. Mm -hmm. So it might get 50 or 60 feet of range, maybe 40 feet of range. Mm -hmm. But here's the beauty of your phone. You could bring your phone to the stage and now it doesn't matter how far away it is. So you could say, all right, I'm, I'm with all my receivers. I got all my frequencies set, everything's great. And then you could drive home and sync your transmitters 10 miles away if you really needed to do that for some reason, right? Yeah. So the the range at that point becomes essentially unlimited because you can now take all of your receivers with you on your phone. Wow. So it's pretty cool stuff happening so, that really puts it into a category that, that no other system's at, especially at the price point that we're at, right? I mean- Agreed, agreed. For sure. I mean, you know, your your high end wireless tends to be, you know, two, three, four thousand dollars a channel, right? And now we're far below that at you know map we're map pricing here for a handheld is six ninety nine. So I know it's know. incredible, incredible. I mean, truly. Um, with that, are you guys adding any other accoutrements to that? You know, any is there a different distro that goes with that, or is there are you reusing things or? What do you got? How are you guys addressing that with the new? Yeah, system? so that's actually a really good um, point here. So with mm -hmm. this system, um, it really, in order to achieve these amazing specs, it really demands very, very low noise components, right? Mm -hmm. So we have brand new distribution for this system that's called the EWD ASA Antenna Splitter Active. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is the perfect device. You can chain essentially an unlimited number of those together mm -hmm. in order to do as many systems as you want. You'll run out of available spectrum far before you've used too many of them. So that's not a problem. They're also going to work amazingly well because of how low noise they are with basically every other wireless system ever, including our high-end 6000 or our older G3 or G4 or G2 or competitor systems. There's pretty much the lowest noise floor splitter that's ever been kind of built. And the one misconception that I do see a lot is a splitter is a splitter. They're all the same. And that is mm. very not true. <laughs> the amount of noise that comes through that splitter is can be huge. I mean, we've seen splitters that are 
50 times noisier than the EWD ASA. So then I get a lot of questions of, well, but I have this other one, can I use it? And the answer is probably, you probably can use it and it will probably work. It will reduce the performance of the system by some amount. And it's unfortunately impossible for us to tell you how much, because it really all depends on how much noise is being added by mm -hmm. that device, right? So if you already have a third-party distribution system or one of our older distribution systems, you can try it. And if you get enough performance out of the system, that's okay. And, and as long as it's working, right, it's great. Um, but we do recommend upgrading to the new one because you can guarantee that you'll get a much better performance out of it, less into, you know, almost no intermodulation, actually pretty much zero intermodulation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very, very low noise floor. So you get the maximum amount of range. Um, so it's it's tough. We definitely recommend that you go with, you know, the high quality new splitters, which are, by the way, the same price as the old, our old splitters. Yep. Um, but I don't want you to think that, you know, oh, I can't use my old one. You, you might be able to just know that you are reducing the performance of the system a little bit. And depending on how close you are to the limit of the system, might be okay, right? If if let's say you can get 330 feet out of the system in the current environment, and then you use an old splitter, you might reduce that to 250 feet or 220 mm -hmm. feet. If you're only 60 feet away, it's probably going to be just fine and you won't know, right? So just keep that in mind. We always recommend though, having um, the most you know, being as far away from that point where it's going to not work as you mm -hmm. possibly can, right? Because yeah, again, you can't control everything. You can't control the environment. You can't control, mm -hmm. uh oh, they just sat on the body pack and now like their entire mass is blocking mm -hmm. it. So yep. we lost a little bit of range and stuff like that. So, you know, you always want to give yourself the best opportunity to work <laughs> as you can. Set yourself up for success immediately. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, Greg, I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day. We know how busy you are. And um, this new product is truly groundbreaking and uh, truly welcomed, especially from someone like myself who works in the House of Worship community. This is going to be a welcomed addition to a uh, challenging environment, but making it successful for those folks who uh, may not, you know, have the expertise, but want to have the success. So I want to thank you and thank Sennheiser for the time today. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, really appreciate you having us and, uh, you know, anything you guys need or any of the customers need, you just let us know and we're, we're here to help. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you so much. And my best to you and yours. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Have a great day. This educational series is brought to you by TMP Pro, your source for pro audio, video and lighting. Along with access to hundreds of top brands, we offer technical support from certified specialists who can assist with system design. With itemized quotes and no binds or minimums, TMP Pro makes it easy to place one order for many brands. By consolidating orders, we're also passing freight savings on to you. It's like we're your warehouse, keeping the products you sell in stock and filling orders quickly from our three distribution hubs. Find out more by visiting tmppro.com. Thanks for listening.